Welcome everyone to our special presentation by Ryan Genther. Go ahead, Ryan. Not able to share my screen yet. It says Sorry. It just, oh, there we go. <laughs> Is it good now? I think, I think so. Yeah. Can you see it? Perfect. Oops, nope, not that one. I just want to share. All right, one second. There we go. You're seeing the whole screen now? Yes, looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, good deal. All right, well, thank you, everyone. So um, put together a small um, PowerPoint regarding physical fitness. Um, I'll say firstly, I'm not a professional uh, trainer and um, never studied physical fitness. My really just a, a keyboard warrior when it comes to my knowledge in this area. Uh, my only formal training is just um, or guidance is in high school basketball, martial arts training in high school. Um, everything else is just internet training. So I'll assume I know what I'm talking about until someone someone else tells me otherwise. So here we go. Um, so there's more to physical fitness than just hitting the gym three days, three times a day. Uh, I'd like to prevent, present a few ideas so we can achieve a better relationship with physical fitness and in turn feel, feel, feel better results. As I'm sure you all can guess, the results will require hard work and commitment in some form, but that's why we, uh, we work as a team to share information and tips when we can afford to do so. Uh, I looked at a range of applicable fitness uh, regimens for, that the Health and Wellness Committee and eventually the, the Militia Assembly might be able to take advantage of. I think it'd be uh, beneficial to everyone to break down our exercise protocol or would-be exercise protocol into three categories, beginner, novice, and expert. Uh, today our focus will be on beginner, but novice and expert really should just be a simple extrapolation of today's content. So I'd like to first, but how, before we get to that, I'd like to first share a, um, two underlying themes of thought to keep in, keep in mind throughout the presentation and in, during your individual training. The first one, uh, I'd like to think of uh, assembly members as highly motivated people. And therefore, this quote from Friedrich Nietzsche comes to mind. Uh, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. And to me, that means if I can, I can find a reason why to do something, I will always figure out how to do it. But my why, um, what motivates me to, to get out to the gym or to go run some laps is really just to be able-bodied and uh, to protect my family and friends and community if, if there's ever a need to do so. And in order to accomplish that, um, yeah, I want to be in, in best possible shape if, um, if appropriate and at the ready. So motivation is key in just about everything we do. Having a strong and specific why is important to accomplish our short-term and long-term goals. Secondly, um, I don't think we have to get very fancy in our exercises exercise techniques to be physically fit. Um, although I have looked at a wide range of exercises, I would like us to train our bodies in as many ways as we, as we can that will be directly applicable to the task that we expect, to, uh, expect ourselves to perform. Uh, that could be simply walking long distances, carrying things, gas cans, um, a sack of flour or rice. Uh, it could be something as simple as crawling on our stomachs doesn't seem very spe a very specialized motion. Um, so, you know, it could be bending over on our knees or at our back to, to pick things up, um, et cetera. This is as opposed to, opposed to shooting basketballs or catching footballs or swinging golf clubs, which are relatively speaking, very specialized movements. 
And the, the difference is subtle, uh, but I think it's important for us, uh, us for who would otherwise expend our limited amount of time and energy and expertise on less applicable exercises. So if you haven't noticed, um, there are a lot of trifectas in the American government. And for our presentation, physical fitness is no different. This, while this is a gross oversimplification, I've broken down fitness in general into three, three pillars, if you will. Uh, nutrition, uh, mental and emotional fitness, and physical. So there are some obvious, real obvious interdependencies and, and, and sort of synergistic bonuses uh, between the three. It's hard to be physically fit when we are nu uh, nutritionally and mentally unfit. Uh, for this slide, I, I grouped in a few other extra items, so I added biological fitness. I need to think of a better name for this slide. But um, So Michelle's not here, but she spoke to, uh, this is probably a no neurons needed for this association. Uh, to be, in order to be physically fit, um, being nutritionally fit is, is, is paramount. The body obviously needs nourishment in order to achieve optimal functionality. I agree a thousand percent what was said back in January. But the, the single, single greatest change one can make uh, to, to lose weight is probably not physical, but nutritional. Um, moving down, there's probably other things you can experiment with. Um, fasting is one of them. Uh, not just to be in more control of any cravings that you might get, but uh, I'm not sure our bodies were built to consume so much food in a, in a, in a given day or week. I think fasting could bring about interesting hormonal changes for people that, would, that could ultimately lead to losing weight and have a better relationship with food. Uh, fasting advocates would say the body needs to rest longer in between meals. And I would not be surprised if there's a correlation with fasting and um, us having longer telomeres. Uh, sleep, no doubt, helps us rebuild our muscles after a long and um, strenuous day. And grounding is an interesting area of study as well. I don't know much about but uh, some profess it has exceptional healing capabilities. So anyways, if it helps rebuild our bodies, it belongs on this list. Mental and emotional fitness. While mental and emotional are probably different from each other, they're close enough to combine from combine for this slide. I would like to think we all want to have, a, have the mental and emotional fortitude to deal with life's challenges as they are presented to us. We don't always get to choose, choose our challenges. Um, that are presented to us. It takes a special kind of person to work an entire day, day and night, filling sandbags for an impending flood uh, and still have the mental bandwidth and to have fun and crack jokes while, while doing so or while cooking dinner that night. So the ability to rise above and overcome challenges as well as keep your own attitude positive and those of your teammates cannot be underestimated. So over on the left column, I listed a few traits that, uh, that I would aspire to, to, you know, when presented or when yeah, presented with a certain challenge to try and try and keep to some of these traits and aspire to, to fulfill them and, and spread them, spread them amongst the team. And in the right column are just some techniques that uh, each of us could try on our own to individually achieve those goals. And there's a website down the right in the bottom where the website and the YouTube video actually explains some of the more, a little bit more context on, on how these uh, traits and techniques are applicable. Okay, so on to the thir third pillar. No matter how much, how many exercises uh, I show you, I can't make you or much less healthy do 100 push-ups or run a mile. So instead, I'm going to attempt to share a few insights, uh, perhaps change the way you perceive uh, your obligation to exercise and hopefully improve your relationship with exercise. And then if we're lucky, one day without checking the, the scale or the mirror, uh, we will just feel differently because we've adopted a new relationship uh, with fitness. So for the, sake, sake to, for the sake of making a simple point, let's pretend there are seven types of physical fitness. We'll, um, we'll have them manifest into three representative body types. This is a gross oversimplification. Uh, but I'm highlighting these three body types in an attempt to make a distinction in the type of physical fitness I think we should be partial to as we move forward. 
while we aren't interested in becoming bodybuilders, professional athletes, or even soldiers or special forces operators, um, you, you may be able to guess, uh, I think, the exercise techniques and philosophy of the soldiers and special forces operators, believe it or not, will be the most beneficial to us. So for bodybuilders, uh, they tend to excel at muscular, again, gross oversimplification, but they tend to excel at muscular endurance and muscular strength, but may not be so impressive in the other areas of fitness. And again, just to simplify their, their exercise focus, a lot of isotonic exercises, some of their exercises can be one dimensional and only are exercised in a partial range of motion of, of those joints and uh, limbs. Uh, and we tend, in those types of bodies, if, if presented in a different situation that may be more applicable or appropriate to what we might find ourselves in, they may tend to find themselves having more of a rigid body, cumbersome body, or prone to energy, uh, injury when performing complex um, and full spectrum motions. Now, athletes obviously are exceptionally fit, um, but their areas of focus are often specialized and narrow. We're splitting hairs here, but in terms of exercise technique, I think it's important for us average people to simplify our exercises where appropriate and possible as we don't have lots of fancy equipment or expensive trainers. If athletes train to excel at very specialized fitness, then we can aspire to train to excel at virtuous fitness to use our second sort of principle or train of thought. Uh, again, their exercise focus is lots of isometrics, isotonics, isokinetic, one-dimensional exercises, as well as multi-dimensional exercises, plyometrics, and calisthenics. A uh, wide range of exercises that, that, that they utilize. So the soldiers and special forces operators. Uh, obviously, they meet and exceed at all the different types of physical fitness, like athletes, but uh, with one additional sort of virtuous twist. Uh, by contrast, the special forces operators, their body types are well-rounded. Uh, when you boil down all of their emotions, we might say that they are virtuously fit. And what I mean by that is that they simply perform, perform common tasks uncommonly well. Uh, it could be something as simple as carrying heavy things, I mentioned at the beginning. Sometimes awkwardly shaped objects over their heads or crawl on their elbows and knees, right? We don't, we don't think of athlete, you know, professional athletes of performing and being paid to perform these kinds of motions. Uh, walk long distances with a backpack on, um, and so on. Obviously, I'm simplifying their work, but we are interested in their workout routine and philosophy. Uh, so in our own way, we should focus our efforts on what we'll call um, MRFT, Mission Relevant Functional Training. Um, so before we're intimidated by all these early men in camouflage, let's remember we simply want to perform common tasks uncommonly well. So if you walk away with nothing else today, walk away with the idea of mission-relevant functional training, which we'll get into a little bit later. Most, if not all, of the exercises that we are going to look at are scalable. The only difference between the beginner level and the expert level is the frequency of workout and intensity of workout. I'm of the opinion that we keep our exercises simple and fun at first, especially at the quote-unquote beginner level. Uh, I would say one of our main goals is to reactivate our bodies and reestablish our neurological connection with our muscle fibers. If you already work out, um, jog, yoga, then you have a head start. Uh, you already have a mindset to, to get your body you know, moving and, and moving certain muscle groups and you know, having a quote-unquote quiet time or exercise time for yourself. Um, and we want to focus on flexibility and mobility, durability, endurance, and strength. And we certainly want to avoid injury, not having fun, and quitting a regimen. Um, so just trying to encourage us to get on the, uh, the put the right foot forward and um, ad adopt a schedule that's going to be conducive to, to our own sort of status of where we are in our extra, quote unquote, exercising. We won't call it a career, but um, uh, adventure, we'll say, journey. So training concepts. Um, if this applies to you, number one, um, 
uh, I want to keep in mind uh, for folks to keep in mind they're they're taking their for those who take their bias to the absolute physical limits. Um, it's important for them to remove any kind of dysfunction, sore spots, um, tight muscles, and things like that before some cadet was going you know participating in like special forces selection. Uh, but it may apply to some of us as well who have um, you know chronic you know, pain and whatnot and may need to work out certain muscles. Uh, number two, most strength is not increased by increasing the diameter of, our, of the muscle, but rather by improving the activation of those muscles. Meaning we want to get the nervous system to activate more muscles, muscle fiber, instead of growing the muscle fibers themselves. This is a new concept to me, but I think it's, it's worth um, investigating more and to see what the actual um, sort of mechanics or the quantities of, of, of the frequency of exercise and how much, uh, which I don't really delve into here. You know, if you're a special forces operator, you're probably working out a lot more, even though the volume might be uh, reduced to not, um, well, so what I mean by that is, is how, how do we activate more muscle fibers? Is to do more repetition. This is where I was going to with that, with that last slide. We want to do more repetitions without causing muscle fatigue. <clears throat> um, since we are not training for muscle failure, we do have, um, if we do have a misstep in recovery time, our recovery time should be quicker. Uh, so, sorry, so starting from number one, every set, um, every sort of exercise set should be intense enough to active, activate muscle fiber, but not too much volume in order to cause fatigue. Bodybuilders increase, whereas whereas bodybuilders increase the size of muscle by pushing muscle failure. Uh, what we want to do is we want to train, train for performance instead of muscle failure. Because muscle failure increases recovery time, which equals less training. And since training, we're saying training uh, occurs on a neurological level, we want increased repetitions. And um, I touched upon already, but uh, we want to be able to if we do have a misstep, we want to be able to recover quickly from that failure um, during training. If we sprain an ankle or something like that, the, our load, our volume should be light enough to recover quickly and get back into our training. Number four, um, I think it's number, yeah, number four. This is, um, Train functional exercise applicable to our goals and duties. This is back to that uh, mission relevant functional training idea. So below are a few examples. If let's say we want to train endurance, you know, we could pick any number of exercises to train our endurance. We could ride a bike, we could row, uh, but let's instead think and train ourselves to pick an exercise that is more relevant to our training and where we see ourselves uh, using our training and fitness. So we could ruck, which is just simply throwing on a backpack with some weight in it and walking long distances or running. If you were a special forces operator, when you are participating in selection, you're not going to be asked to bike or row. So someone in that situation would spend their time on rucking or running. Uh, if, let's say, we wanted to increase our wrist strength, you know, you could go grab a dumbbell and a bench and, and just curl dumbbell curls with your wrist. Well, that's, I would consider that a very one-dimensional exercise. So let's instead think of different exercises that work more muscles in a, in a, in, in more of a multi-dimensional way and are in, utilize the full range of motion, which we'll cover a little bit later. So one example of that would be farmer carries. Those are heavy carries, and we'll, we'll show you what that is. Uh, we could do pull-ups. Again, pull-ups might be, are going to certainly going to be used or asked you to, ask of you to perform if you're if you were a special forces operator and being tested on these types of things. Rope climbing. Um, while again, we probably aren't going to climb too many ropes, uh, but it's 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 the exercise that is working several different muscles um, instead of just a simple wrist or uh, dumbbell curl with the wrist. Similar with back strength. Um, we could be doing lateral pull-downs or dumbbell rows uh, on a machine or with dumbbells. Instead, we could look at doing contralateral crawls. Again, we can have a video there that will, 
will show you what that is exactly. Kettlebell swings. Um, and there's a call, an exercise called the get up. Uh, just we want to, I am advocating that we, we think, rethink our types of exercise and which ones are more applicable to and are going to hit the most muscles that where we are interested in, uh, muscle groups that we are interested in, in targeting. And number five, we want to train through the full range of motion. Uh, this is how our joints were built. And by training in full range of motion, if we ever have a, uh, a misstep, uh, we trip over something or we, you know, step on something, you know, this will help. We've, we've trained through the full range of motion that, that will help us prevent injuries. Uh, number six, just being able to lift awkwardly sized objects through all planes of motion. Uh, a small diagram for you to show what planes of motion we're interested in, but the, mostly the frontal plane, sagittal plane, and transversal, transversal plane. And number seven, this is an interesting area that I think gets overlooked, but we want to train our stabilizer muscle. Um, this will, I think this will increase our better, um, increase our physical intelligence and muscle group endurance. I would not be surprised if the more stabilizer muscles we hit during these, these specific exercises, we might see better results in terms of um, where that in areas that are tend to be a little harder to lose weight or train. Um, I would probably say lose weight, uh, maybe not being defined in having a tonal muscle since we're not really tra training specialized minute uh, areas of muscle. So where do we begin? Uh, first, we're going to cover some examples, sample exercises, and attempt to put a schedule together. Um, an overview, let's, uh, we're going to first pick some warm-up exercises. Believe it or not, warm -up, uh, a workout or a warm-up exercise could be a workout in and of itself. And then, depending on where you're at, where you are at and how comfortable you are picking a, an ex one, a single exercise or a series of exercises, Pick some that are of interest to you, that you think you're going to utilize and have fun with. Uh, keep it simple, fun, and, and short, uh, certainly at first. And again, your body will adapt. And you can, as it adapts, you'll feel more confident with the motions that you're making. And you can add different exercises and extend, and extend your exercise time. Um, I recommend you make uh, your list of exercises, make a portable list. Um, to be able to take with you to the park, to the gym, um, you can prepare a lot. Of, you can prepare videos on your phone to take with you. Well, I'll show you. I have a couple examples in here of um, some good you know, 15, 20, 30 minute videos that you could just throw on, and they've got already got the timers, and they'll, they're walking you through the entire entire video. I'm sure you've all seen them yourselves. And then, lastly, think. I would think of begin to loosely think about how many days a week you want to exercise and about roughly how long you want to exercise in, in, in a given session. Work and life progresses on its own schedule and most of the time. Um, so don't, we don't have to force the same schedule each and every week or the length of session. I know I certainly don't. Um, and I tend to, I just want to encourage a better relationship with exercise. If I don't make it one day, um, fine. I'll, I'll try to make it. I might make it, I might go through a couple of days. Even though I meant to make it out to the gym, I might go a couple of days without getting back out there. And then sometimes I might exercise two days in a row. It all kind of depends. I, I just encourage having a flexible schedule. Uh, and consider rotating through your exercises like we rotate through our meals. Uh, you don't have to do the same exercises each workout day. And if you, even if you can't finish an entire workout session, um, at least attempt a few exercises uh, you can, instead of doing a full set, you might just do a partial set or go easy on the weight um, or any weight or if, if, if you use any weight. So the, um, our beginner exercises, so the, our routine, uh, what were we, areas of, that we want to exercise, I've broken down into six, six areas. We've got a, a group for or an area for warm up, our core, strength, metabolic conditioning, endurance, and heavy carries. Here is a list of some of the workout or the warm up exercises um, with a website link at the bottom to you can see how these are done. 
you'll have to fish around to the website, but he, he goes through all of them eventually. Uh, the sumo walk, you notice there's a, 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 if you don't have a lateral banded walk, there's a band that you can use, put around your, your thighs uh, to increase resistance. But if you don't have a, a band, you can just do a sumo walk. It's just kind of taking the shape of, of, of the position of dance of a sumo wrestler and, and, and walking sideways. Um, I put a V next to it because I wanted to highlight some of these that were um, more, maybe more applicable to this sort of virtuosity um, theme. Banded hamstring, knee grab, uh, froggy is really just kind of um, leaping over with one leg at a time, um, extending your, your hip flexors and just working, working, again, trying to reduce injury, chance of injury, and um, hitting certain muscle groups that aren't normally hit. Toe grabs, elephant walks, uh, the contralateral crawl. Again, we'll have to jump into that, web, that website at the bottom to see exactly how that's done. Uh, a very, another very good exercise that I, that I recommend uh, that does work your wrist. So if you have bad wrists, you might want to skip it or at least uh, exercise your wrists beforehand. Uh, but all these are very good for a warm-up. And again, uh, they might be a workout session in and of itself. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because when you know, one week or months, might, months might go by just using this workout, this warm-up session as your workout, and you'll 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 feel better, and then you'll at one day you'll decide, okay, I can I can go a little bit longer. I've got a better endurance uh, to group in some more, um, incorporate some more exercises. So the core group exercises um, below here at the bottom right corner is an example of the get-up exercise moving from A, B, C, D uh, positions, and then you go back from, once you get to E, then you go back down to D, C, B, and then back down to A, and then repeat. That's a get up. Um, and then sandbag to shoulder, crab walk, bear walk, scorpion walk. These are all things that we wouldn't normally think of athletes, professional athletes performing. But, um, Again, to use a soldier or special forces operator uh, theme, yeah, they may find themselves on the ground. And um, I think in general, I know I didn't, all these are walks where you're on your all fours, the crab walk, bear walk, and scorpion walk. And I think I never have I worked my wrist uh, so much during some of these exercises. But I think they're highly recommended in it. And some of these exercises, you will work your stabilizer, a lot of stabilizer muscles because you have to maintain balance when you're doing these exercises. It's not just a single muscle group that you are working. Um, strength. Uh, star lunges are simply uh, a lunge in eight different directions with, uh, with both legs. And you just make a pattern of a star as you, as you grab some weight or no weight and you Take a step forward um, with one of your legs and repeat in a, in, in a circle in eight different directions. Uh, kettlebell swings, push-ups, nothing new there. Sled pushes, if you have the equipment available to do something like that. Um, maybe it might be a wheelbarrow without the wheels or something. Um, some interesting ways to, to kind of accomplish some of these. But if not, I wouldn't, if you don't have the equipment, I wouldn't sweat it. Just move on to something different. And if you think of something, you, know, you could you could... Uh, for sled push, um, I don't know. I'd have to think of a of a uh, jerry rig setup to do that, something like that. But um, that's close to the bottom. There's sled pull. Now you might tie a rope around a sandbag and pull and pull that. If you don't have uh, a different setup that you might find in a gym. Metabolic conditioning. Um, I would think of these of this source portion of your workout in five different uh, sort of time groups. Some, any exercises below five minutes or five to 10 minutes or something between 10 and 20 minutes. And you probably, the shuttle runs are probably going to be within that under five minute group. Whereas an assault bike, um, again, I'll, I can provide a, it's one of the earlier website links, but an assault bike is just a, a bike that you can, it's really simple and really simple mo uh, movement that, um, that you just go full out for five to 10 minutes. Um, pretty, I've never used one before, but uh, they look to be pretty useful if, you, if you've got one at a nearby gym. 
a one mile run might be a five to 10 minute uh, metabolic conditioning exercise and uh, high intensity interval training or HIIT exercises are pretty useful as well. Those are usually a bit longer. Um, at the end of the presentation, there are a couple of examples of these HIIT exercises that you could follow along, pretty easy to follow along and they could hit I know one could be on just on abs or it could be on back. Uh, so if you want to target, if you're interested in targeting a certain group of muscles, you could probably find a 10 to 20 minute or 30 minute hit exercise to follow along. Endurance, um, again, keeping in mind the mission relevant functional training, uh, walking, hiking, rucking, and jogging, all of this is, they are strengthening our feet. Right, because we might, you know, if if, uh, if several roads are if a tornado swept through, I don't know, uh, West Tennessee, and we can't, the roads are all shut down. We might, you know, might have to walk a mile or two in to get to our destination. And so, picking exercises that are going to be useful to us in the future, or maybe useful to us in the future, um, we want to strengthen our feet, and we might have to carry supplies along, um, you know, on along that route. And so these are some ideas and some examples of what we could do uh, incorporate into our endurance portion of our exercise, uh, of our workout. And I believe lastly, um, heavy carries. Heavy carries are in a group of, of themselves. People don't, no one ever does enough heavy carries, so they kind of get their own group. And these are really good for wrists, um, as well as building strength. Um, I think most of these are covered in that in that YouTube link, the YouTube video at the bottom. But the two-handed overhead is is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, grab something heavy and lift it over your head. And usually, a lot of these you can walk. I don't know, 20, 40 yards, and that could be one one set. You can do that a couple of times or whatever is appropriate for yourself. So um, schedule. Over in the left column, we've got those six areas that I mentioned, warm-up, core, strength, metabolic conditioning, running, and heavy carries or endurance, endurance instead of running. And um, I have uh, in the SR column, basically that just means, uh, I think it just means one set, and it could be reps or it could be a certain distance. So for a lat lateral banded walk or sumo walk, you might do one rep for 20 yards. Um, hamstring stretches and cook bridges, you just hold it for 60 seconds. This is still a, a warm up. Some of those crawls and, and down there, you could just do one rep or 20 yards. Uh, but just begin to break down your exercise groups in, in this sort of fashion if you, if you don't have any previous former experience doing this kind of thing. Uh, core groups, you'll begin to see, as you notice, warm up and core group I have in all three of my exercise, uh, workout days. Day one, day two, day three. Um, I think for me, I, I think the core is important, so I want to hit those every every time I'm, um, um, I choose a day to, to work out. Now, day one, day two, day three doesn't mean consecutive days. It could, you know, day one there might be two, three days in between day one and day two. And there, you know, it all as I mentioned earlier, it just kind of depends on time and availability, right? And how I'm feeling. And day three, you know, your my workout day three might be right after day two if I if I skipped a few days in between day one and day two. Have fun with it. Be flexible. Don't stress out. Miss in a day. So you'll notice uh, these when we get down to the strength group. I took those exercises at the previous slide and I broke them down over all three of my my workout days. I only grabbed two because we want we don't want to work all of them, um, especially we don't want to work them to muscle failure. So keeping that in mind, grab two or three of them and have that have that strength portion. You know, put that in, into one one of your workout days, and just do two of them. Uh, it could be a smaller amount of weight and get more reps in, or repetitions in. And same thing with the metabolic training. You might want to just focus on shuttle runs one day. Don't do don't you know don't skate save the um, the hit exercises for another workout day or save them one mile run or the assault bike for another workout day. Uh, hey, rocking. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. 
I'm so sorry. Chris has his hand raised. I'm not sure if he has a question maybe on something you're. Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead, Chris. Um, do you have a link for this schedule here or is this something you made up or? Uh, this is something I made up, but um, it is covered in one of the uh, one of the links. How to how to set one up? Okay, but I can certainly well, make this available to anyone who's interested. Okay, yeah, I, I'm interested in that. If you want to make that, how? Remember, I'm technologically challenged, so. Sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Sure. Good question. Um, running. Day, uh, so yeah, uh, you know, just pick. Yeah, if I'm rucking for 30 minutes, uh, I don't work out that long, so I might, I might just ruck and not do a lot of the other uh, workouts, or exercises in that group. If I really want to focus on rucking one day, um, again, I'm trying, I'm trying to just foster a healthy relationship with with exercising, uh, so I, I don't don't sweat the small stuff. Um, you might work in some 40 meter sprints. In one of those days, and jogging and walking on, on a different on a different workout day. And again, I did the same thing with the heavy carries. I broke them up over over three different workout days. Uh, but you could you might have six workout days in your in your schedule um, if you want to do just farmer carries on, on a given workout day. And you might you know you might take these three workout days that I have and, and again re rearrange everything and have six of them. So six six. So six workout days might be your entire rotation before you go back to workout day one. Um, this example just so, shows three. So if I, um, I'll hit day one, day two, day three, and then I'll circle back around to day one. It's kind of how this is meant to be used. Final thoughts. Um, just get jump in and get started. Find your rhythm um, and you'll feel out your progress. You know, when I first moved to Tennessee, uh, it had been years since I was in a gym, inside of a gym. And over this past year, I've been able to make, you know, micro adjustments to how I've been working out. And you get into a rhythm, you, you, you know, your muscles are adapting. It, it took a whole year. So there's, there's no rush to be patient with, uh, with, with, with your progress. Again, keep in mind to increase and decrease your frequency and intensity of workout as needed. Uh, it's not a, it's not a race. Uh, we, we want to encourage and promote, you know, prolonged long, longevity and, um, you know, a healthy sort of workout environment over over our many years because we none of us are are, are as young as uh, as we used to be. Incorporate new exercises uh, to work the same muscle groups. Uh, from a slightly different angle. So there are a lot of um, similar exercises. Don't be afraid to to pick a, a to pick an exercise that's similar uh, but different from what you were doing. Uh, it's good to hit them hit the same sort of muscle group or group of muscles from from different from different angles. Uh, so after several months of working out the same exercises, again you 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 will be able to feel your body out and know when you can turn up the intensity on particular exercises. Uh, be patient. I already mentioned that uh, you'll probably steal the results before you see them. So I think that's we can think back to Anisha. Um, don't just make your goal to be physically fit. Instead, um, I would I would encourage we we imagine and visualize any what our motive what our motivation might be our individual motivation might be it might be protecting your home, family during a flood or an active shooter situation, delivering a truckload of supplies to displace community members, whatever the situation might be that motivates you. And um, hopefully if we find it easier to get back out to the, uh, back out into the gym or to the park, get back into our routine. Uh, so lastly, last couple of slides are just some links. Uh, this is the special forces uh, selection link. Uh, he starts all the way from, you know, this is from some, you know, some cadet that wants to get into this. Uh, so he starts from the very beginning of just gathering intelligence and mental preparation um, all the way through the exercises and techniques and training and putting that plan together, Chris. Um, that's where the, in the last one, the training plan is where he spells out how to put that schedule together. Uh, but, um, but if you're interested, these are, these, these are useful if you, um, 
are into sort of the mental preparation and physical preparation, conceptual sort of um, philosophy. Uh, I found uh, this guy to be pretty useful as well, Chris Heria. He, he does a lot of uh, high interval, um, high intensity interval training. He's got some good uh, videos. Again, if you're able to download these videos directly onto your phone, uh, this is useful to just take with you to the gym and follow. You know, your whole workout that day might just be to follow one of these. It could be, it could be, you could pick one of these videos and maybe walk for a mile. Now keep it simple. Um, and then, yeah, he, he hits all the different muscle groups. And I, a lot of his uh, uh, videos uses little to no uh, equipment. So they're pretty down to earth. Uh, a lot of them are calisthenics oriented. Uh, this is another example, um, Mad Fit. She does a lot of high interval, uh, high intensity interval training. Again, similar to the Chris Heria, uh, she breaks it down into certain uh, groups, stretching, cardio, abdominal, arms, legs, whatever you might be interested in. I haven't really watched any of her videos, but um, I'm sure she's got a lot, a lot more than what I have here. Just grabbed a few key ones. That is all. Any questions? Thank you, Brian. That was excellent. Um, yeah, I was going to comment on a couple of things. I agree with you on the whole core. Um, and that's keeping your core exercised and, and strong is huge to, um, retaining your flexibility and strength as you age um, and just in general. And the other thing I thought about was, you know, the endorphins that are released during exercise, that's our body's natural pain reliever. And I know I always feel a lot better, even if I just do a 15, 20 minute workout. Um, and that's what I did for myself. Like, I'm just, my goal is three days a week. If I get more than that, that's a bonus. Um, but if I can do at least three days a week, I feel like I've accomplished something. Yeah, exactly. Chris, go ahead. Oh, great job, Brian. That was, that was, that was deep, man. Um, uh, I, as far as getting a relationship with exercise again, I, I've neglected that relationship. Uh, but, you know, I look at it in for the part of the mental focus towards it. You know, you work, everybody's so busy nowadays and there's just not much time for it. If you could condense it to like just, just a little bitty gains, like maybe the, the lunges and things like that, just to get a little better here, a little better there. That's, that's, that's what we, that's what I'm looking toward. Anyway, I'm not going to run no marathon or pick up, look like that guy that was slow or anything, but, uh, you know, general fitness and, uh, diet. That's definitely the area that needs work, but uh, for me uh, and and uh, a lot of a lot of us folks in the um, assembly are, um, you know, we're not the, the youngest uh, uh, demographic that there is. I mean, it takes a while to um, come to your senses, I'd say. Um, but that training, beginning training thing with the stretching and basic, just a little better than you were last week. That That's a great job. I yield it. I just want to say thank you to Ryan. Well put together. I just appreciate all the thought and um, time and energy and, and the application, you know, of putting it in context of, you know, what, what do we want to be prepared for? So thanks for that. It was really thorough yeah and by no means by no means am i an expert so if um if you guys want are interested in any other areas of, of fitness let me know i can tweak it and uh, any feedback on what you guys are interested in or input 
um, is certainly open because I have talked to Stanley a little bit about it, um, utilizing this for the militia assembly in some capacity. Yeah, I know you had mentioned that at the beginning and I was going to ask whether you had actually presented it to them or were thinking about it, but yeah, that's great. No, not yet. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.